This is my 41-year-old oscilloscope, a fairly basic 60 MHz two-channel Tektronix 2215, and it catastrophically failed the other day to my great disappointment. I bought it second-hand, and the scope has been my faithful companion for the last 30 years, which is half my life. It's a basic unit, it's simple to operate, and until now it's been really reliable. And I didn't want to say goodbye to it for a modern digital scope because of my attachment to things old. A few minutes after I turned it on, it sparked and sputtered inside, and then a pungent smoke escaped from the vents, and this was followed by a loud explosion. I've only serviced the scope once since I owned it, and that was many years ago, to replace some differential amplifier chips. But I suspect that the current problem came about by the failure of aging capacitors, and an autopsy proved that this assumption was correct. Unlike modern electronics, this 1982 oscilloscope is easy to service. You don't need a microscope or fancy surface mount solder gear. Most of the electronics is mounted on a single sided through hole PCB board with a secondary switch mode power supply mounted upside down over the main PCB. The chief culprit was found to be a Riffa brand filter capacitor near the power inlet. Their dramatic failure is well known in old equipment. Once removed, a search was undertaken for further RIFA caps in the filtering circuits and four other Class Y caps were found and all were removed and replaced with equivalent polyester safety caps. This style of RIF capacitor was made in Sweden in the 70s and the 80s and has a 100% failure rate, 100%. They're literally a time bomb in old equipment still in service. In their final seconds they go dramatically from capacitor to smoke bomb before they finally detonate. There are two types of RIF film capacitors used in this machine. Class X which is connected between the live and neutral conductors and Class Y which is connected between live and earth or neutral and earth. Class X caps are designed to fail by going short circuit and they blow a nearby fuse, whilst the Class Y ones are designed to fail by going open circuit. And because they're connected to earth, this stops the chassis becoming electrified in the event of a failure. So it's important to replace like for like. This scope also has a Schaffner modular filter unit built into the power inlet. These are great devices for smoothing voltage spikes and noise entering the unit and they also prevent interference from leaving the unit through the power lines. But the Schaffner IEC power filter from this era also contains several riffer caps in a sealed unit and these have been known to explode as well, so a replacement filter with a generic type was also undertaken. Even if the unit is turned off from the front panel switch but left on at the wall, power is still running to the filter caps and failure is possible, especially in a unit over 40 years old. There are a few theories about why these riffers fail so predictably. A metallic film is encased in some sort of epoxy case and the film expands and contracts when it's heated by being turned on and off or just by changes in the ambient room temperature. Over time the case becomes brittle and doesn't expand. So under pressure from the expanding metal film the case fractures and develops fine hairline cracks. The film inside the capacitor is hygroscopic and absorbs water from the air through the tiny cracks. During regular use, the capacitor can bleed off small amounts of moisture without a problem. However, when enough moisture enters the capacitor, it boils and explodes. <laughs> oh, Usually this happens after the equipment has been left sitting idle and unused for a while. I believe the reliability of a device is inversely proportional to the number of electrolytic capacitors inside. So whilst this machine was undergoing a post-mortem, I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors with high temperature, low ESR variants, without even testing them. Just going to put a little blob there. That's, That's all we need. Lot. Oh, it is a lot actually. Okay, then I'm going to. Why do you have a tiny film camera? Now we're going to put this on. Some of the larger ones showed slight deformation in the casing, and others had minor leakage. 
but despite being over 40 years old, many looked as good as the day they were put in. But the electrolyte dries out and the nature of the capacitor changes, so it was cheap insurance to replace the lot and avoid another catastrophic failure further down the line. This model also contains a number of high value carbon resistors which go out of spec, particularly on the focus circuit. There are no problems with the focus at the moment, so I'll save that one for another day. A quick squirt of WD-40 fixed a sticking power switch, and after reassembly, the unit was powered up. No noise, no smoke, no explosion, no shocks. Just a reanimated 41-year-old Tektronix 2215, working again within spec, and a happy owner once more.